Hey guys, I'm Zach with Wired Customs. Welcome back to Wired Customs TV. And today we're going to go over how to remove the front and rear hubs on early Ford brakes. easy task for the front, um, not too much out of the norm. What you want to do is remove the hub caps and the rim. Uh, we just want to get it down to bare hub. Then you want to unscrew like the little dust cover on the end. Some of the later hubs, um, it pops off. The earlier hubs, they screw in and out. So get the, uh, the dust cover off. On the inside, you should have a castle nut with a cotter pin on it. Um, sometimes I've seen belling wire, that, that's what you used to do uh, back in the old school days. Hopefully you have something that's holding on that castle nut. Get that out of there, take the castle nut off. So the only thing that's really holding the front hub on now is possibly rust against the brake pads onto the hub or any little uh, bit of uh, notches or grooves that the wheel bearing has made over time on the spindle. Um, this usually is really easy to come off. Make sure if you got a good running driving car, just wiggle it back and forth. It's going to come off uh, like this one here in the video. The front literally is just that easy. It's pretty close to a common car. Um, there's just a little bit more adjustments when it comes to the brakes. I'll have another video that goes over how to rebuild early Ford brakes. Okay, so now we move on to the rear hub. A uh, little bit more complicated, something that's a little bit different from a, a modern vehicle. So obviously uh, the same starting point, get the hub cap rim off. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to remove uh, rear drums on these early Fords. They're not as easy as just about anything else. So what we really actually have to do is pull this cotter pin out, take the whole bolt off, and we actually have to get a puller to pull this hub off. A lot of old schoolers would tell you just to back that nut off a little bit, drive the car around the block, come back, it should break that loose for you. Um, for me, that's a little bit more scary or dangerous. I, I don't do anything like that at all. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not saying it doesn't work, but it, it probably does. But uh, I like to think safety, safety first. So uh, what we're going to do is take that nut all the way off. And you're going to need a special tool. So if you're watching this, trying to do it step by step, I'd recommend for you to wait and get this special tool right here. Um, I get this from Max Fabrication. I've used this a bunch of times. The tool hasn't worn out. All I've done is just spray a little bit of black paint over it over the years and it's, it's kept me really good. So. so here's our little puller right here. This is what it looks like. And it's gonna grab around the rings of the hub and it's gonna pull the hub off. Now we're gonna bolt, bolt this down and I'm gonna put a little bit of NICs on my threads here. Anything that's a puller always needs NICs. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take my tool off since I don't need it anymore. And that's how you get the drums off of an early Ford. On this tool, I've had to put little spacers in here so these bolts don't um, go all the way through and hit the hub. Um, sometimes the bolts are too long on this setup, but this pulls it off every time for me. Um, obviously, there's always ones that are harder than others. This car that I did for the video, it came off like butter. This is a nice running driving car. If you have a running driving car, this is what you should expect. It should come off very easy. Um, these wheel bearings aren't that tight. The castle nut on these wheel bearings shouldn't be that tight. On the back, if you have trouble getting the back off, you can put heat to the hub. Um, most of the time, it's usually the brakes that are messing up. They're either rusted, stuck. We have a groove on the drum. So what I recommend before you ever get to heat is to adjust your brakes in as far as they can possibly go. Um, if you have a locked hub, you need to work on getting that wheel locked and free spinning before you try to take it off. It's going to make the process a lot easier. 
because then you don't know if you've adjusted the brake shoes all the way in or not. Uh, once you get it spinning, then you can feel it and back out the brake shoes manually that way. So I recommend that. Um, if you have a really stuck one, I'd take the brake hose off and make sure there's no pressure inside that fluid for the, the cylinder on the inside. On the inside of these hubs, there's straight wheel bearings. So these straight style wheel bearings on a straight uh, shaft can actually wear down a groove over time. And when you try to get the hub off, you could be fighting that groove there also. So you need to be really careful in this process. A lot of penetrating oil. Make sure you back off the brake shoes. Make sure you uh, disconnect the cylinder in there so there's no pressure um, fighting you on the cylinder side of it. All right, guys, so this is just a short video for today. Uh, I'm sorry I used such a nice car for the demonstration, but it came apart really easily. Um, on the harder cars, there's a lot more work involved. If you like this video, say something in the comments, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. We have a lot of stuff coming up. I'm converting a Model A mechanical brakes over to juice brakes. I have a banjo rear diff that I'm going to rebuild. I'm going to be changing to an open drive shaft and I'm going to be changing the gear ratios in a, in a banjo. So that's pretty exciting. Thank you for watching. Now get out of here and get your shift together.